Namaste. So I had to return to this subject one more time to illustrate the practical significance of this analysis. Well, what does it mean that we divide up yoga into four stages, four main stages, karma, bhakti, raja, and jnana? <laughs> what it means in practice is that a person in the first stage of karma yoga, which is probably 99% of everybody uh, who's consciously on the spiritual path, they can only perceive truth in terms of rigid concepts, a permanent fixed self-identity, and uh, rules and regulations in practice. Huh? Now, you think over all the people you know or have encountered who are into spiritual life. This describes the vast majority of them, doesn't it? Now, of course, the other thing you have to be aware of is that there are bogus, phony, or counterfeit people claiming to be all four of these types of yogis. So there are phony karma yogis, huh? the ones who claim to follow the rules but don't, <laughs> or the ones who identify with or even use a name of a certain path or guru or process, but they don't really do it. Huh? It's only a name, it's only an image. And then there are the ones who uh, deliberately change the teachings, who call it one thing and do something completely different. I'll give you a really egregious example. Huh? People who claim to be teaching yoga. <laughs> what they're really doing is some exercises. Isn't it? If you go back to the original source materials on Hatha Yoga by Patanjali and others, you'll find that there's eight steps. Yama, Niyama, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi. Without all those eight steps, you don't have yoga. And of course, the question is, yoga means Connection, linking. A linking with what? Linking with your body? Come on. That's not yoga. Of course, the body needs to be kept in good health, and exercise is a necessity on the spiritual path, but come on. Huh? That's bogus. Similarly, there are phony bhakta yogis, bhakti yogis, uh, most of those are actually karma yogis following all kinds of rules and regulations and with very rigid concepts about what uh, yoga or what bhakti is or who you can worship as a bhakta or how. Huh? But they miss the whole point that bhakti is about love and love cannot be constrained by rules and regulations. So actually they're only posing as bhaktas. They're really karma yogis. Huh? And the same is true of Raja Yoga and Jnana Yoga. There are everybody who claims to be into meditation, uh -huh, but is not really following uh, the path of Raja Yoga, which is a very analytical path. They also may have rigid beliefs about what's right and wrong, good and bad, how you should meditate, and everybody else is wrong, you know. <laughs> no, they're karma yogis. Sorry. And then there's the people who pretend to be jnanis. And this, I might even have to devote an entire post, uh, an entire video, just to this particular form of counterfeit yoga. People claim to be jnanis, but their philosophy is completely bogus. 
they say, well, it's all one. So I'm God and I could do whatever I want. And there's no rules and regs, no right and wrong. So I can be selfish. I can be mean. Huh? That's not jnana. So they are really not even karma yogis. They're not yogis at all. They're maybe they're business people. Uh, I know one guy who claimed to be teaching Tantra. But what he was really doing <laughs> was running ecstasy-fueled swinger parties in Hawaii. He got more or less chased out of California. But Hawaii, you know, it's a little bit looser, easier to buy off the cops and so on. So <laughs> he made a huge business out of this. He probably was one of the biggest ecstasy distributors back in the day. But Tantra Yoga? No, 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 no. Tantra Yoga is a very big thing, very powerful thing. And he was just having some good parties, right? Why not just be honest? Why not just be sincere and say, well, we've adapted or extracted a, a few methods that were originally part of the bhakti or part of the jnana or part of the tantra teaching uh, or part of yoga or whatever. And now we've made our own thing and, we, and you should give it its own name. Huh? Don't call an exercise class yoga. It's not yoga. Uh, maybe it's, you know, cool Indian stretches or whatever you want to call it, you know, but it's not yoga. So the people on the karma yoga stage have very rigid concepts. That's really uh, the main thing about them. You can very easily tell who they are because they don't understand really any of the other paths. Huh? Like the karma yogis who claim to be bhaktas don't understand spontaneous bhakti. Uh, and if they meet someone who's a spontaneous bhakta, they will argue with them and claim that they're not bhaktas at all, put them down, reject them from their association, and so on. And the same goes for raja yogis. Oh, the, the karma yogis are scared to death of raja yoga. Why? Because the principle of raja yoga is analysis and rejection of all name and form. This is the principle of the Buddha's teaching, of course. So they're scared to death of that because it means giving up their rigid concepts, their rigid, closed identity and mental setup and so on. And finally, the jnanis are completely out of their grasp. You know, they criticize the jnanis for saying that they're God. Well, that's not the jnanis exactly, that's the monists. And like I said, it, it might be a good idea to discuss that in detail. The difference between monism and authentic jnana or advaita. So there are real yogis and there are false yogis. And the yogis on the karma yoga path can't really understand any of the others. Those on the bhakta yogi path, the authentic bhakta yoga path, can understand, or at least they can love others, even if they don't understand them. <laughs> but once you graduate from bhakti yoga to raja yoga, and you begin a real analytical uh, meditation on all this stuff, uh, then you can understand karma yoga, you can understand bhakti yoga, but you still can't understand jnana. <laughs> Only the jnanis understand jnana. Now, or actually they realize jnana because it can't be understood. So just like the karma yogi is scared to death of raja yoga, because it means the end of the ego, the Raja Yogis are scared to death of Jnana because it's beyond all concepts completely. Uh, it's inconceivable, as it should be. Huh? 
But for the jnana yogi, he understands everything else, even the false counterfeit uh, yogis, are on the path, they're on the way. They're looking for the thing that the jnani has, uh, full self-realization, wisdom and knowledge of the self, and being the self. Uh, actually, fr from the point of view of the jnani, everybody is perfect. <laughs> everybody is the self playing as something else. Uh, it's just a show. It's just an appearance. The self projects using his potency of maya all these phenomena, bodies, minds, identities, <laughs> actions, karma, birth, rebirth, death, all these things, but none of it is real. To the jnani, it's just like sitting in the movies, huh? Eating popcorn and watching the show. None of it is real. What is real is the movie projector huh? and the screen. The movie projector is pure awareness the self. The screen is consciousness or awareness filtered through the senses and mind of the body. And the show, the movie, is all these phenomena that we're aware of through the senses. So we shouldn't get hung up on the show. We shouldn't identify with any of the phenomena but we should become aware of the different stages of consciousness, waking, dreaming, and sleeping, and see that actually they're going on all the time. And finally, there's the fourth state, Turiya, which is the state of realization, enlightenment, Nibbana, self-realization. So the jnani sees all of this as just part of the show. It's been going on forever and it will go on forever. And even the past forever and the future forever are all part of the present for the jnani. The jnani sees the whole creation, the whole phenomena, the whole show, huh? like a panorama before him. Time is meaningless to the jnani space and action and phenomena are all really just a show. So the jnani is above all, beyond all. Uh, this is what is meant by the description of the Buddha. Gati, gati, uh, gati, gati, paragati, parisamgati. He's beyond. He's gone. Huh? Gone. Gone beyond. Gone beyond beyond. These are the four realizations of the four states of consciousness that are attained by means of the four yogas and are expressed by the syllable Aum. Huh? We discussed this in the series on Gayatri, the meaning of Aum. At the end of, there are three letters in Aum, A, U, N. And at the end is the Anushwara, uh, the little Bindu, which means a beat of silence. And that is the fourth, the Turiya state. A is waking, U is dreaming, N is deep sleep. And Aum symbolizes them all. Aung Tatsa. Aung Harihi Aung.